Thanks to Lore Coffee for sponsoring this video. Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make two types of delicious tiramisu. The first of which is what we'll call best or perfect tiramisu. It's super light, it's creamy, it's coffee forward, and has just a hint of booziness. The second tiramisu cashes in on our collective weakness for fall nostalgia and turns the first recipe into a smooth, luxurious, espresso-powered pumpkin spice latte. To get started, I'll need to set up a double boiler for the zabaglione, or the cooked egg custard that's gonna make up the base of this tiramisu. For that, I'll grab three to four quarts of water and drop it on the stove. And just make sure that the pot that you're using is wide enough to accommodate a medium sized bowl. Now to dial in the most important flavor of this classic tiramisu, we'll need to talk about the espresso. The espresso that I'm using for this recipe is from Lore Coffee and I'll be using their Lore Barista system. This system can make both espresso using these aluminum espresso pods or also coffee using these coffee pods, which are exclusive to the Lore Barista system by the way, but more on the coffee later. For this recipe, I'm gonna be using espresso, the most concentrated version of which is a 1.4 ounce small shot. That's amazing if you're looking for the most flavorful shot to actually drink. The medium double shot is a little bit more food friendly and it's 2.7 ounces of espresso in total. And that's usually what I drink. The largest espresso size is called a Lungo and that comes in at 3.7 ounces. Today, I wanna to strike a balance between espresso intensity and volume. So I'm gonna be pulling eight shots of the medium 2.7 ounce espresso. When it comes to espresso roast for this tiramisu, I generally gravitate towards darker being better. There's a lot of fat and a pretty decent amount of sugar in this tiramisu, and that's gonna cover up most subtlety in the espresso's flavor, meaning lighter roasts will be less assertive. Today, I'm using the darkest roast espresso pods available. On the espresso intensity scale, it's a 12 out of 12, also known as mucho intense. And of course, if you don't have an at-home high-pressured espresso system like this one, you certainly could use powdered espresso. I think the trade-off for flavor is gonna be pretty noticeably not as good, but it'll work in a pinch. In total, eight of the 2.7 ounce medium shots should yield me about 21 to 22 ounces of very flavorful espresso. To that, I'll add 15 grams of vanilla extract, 40 grams of cocoa powder, and stir it to combine. I made three or four pans of tiramisu with just espresso in the lady fingers, and I found it kind of lacked a certain balance and intensity. So adding a little chocolate flavor and the sweet aroma of vanilla makes it hit much harder. Once my soak for the lady fingers is complete, I'll set it aside and then grab my stand mixer to whip up some cream. Into the bowl, I'll add one pint or just over 450 grams of heavy whipping cream. Then the whisk goes on and I'll spin this up for about a minute on high speed or until the cream is whiffed up to stiff peaks like this. Texturally, it should be just a little bit lighter and more whipped up than cake frosting. And be careful you don't over whip this because it'll turn to butter. Now to keep this whipped cream from collapsing, I'm gonna put it in the fridge for however long it takes me to prep the other two pieces of this tiramisu. Next, I'm gonna grab a medium bowl and two half pound tubs of mascarpone cheese. If you can't get mascarpone, just sub in cream cheese with about 50 mils worth of heavy cream. Now this mascarpone is pretty stiff, so I like to stir it a little bit to get it smoothed out. That way it's more willing to mix with the egg custard and the whipped cream that's coming later on. After 30 to 40 seconds of stirring, this is loosened up a little bit. So I'm gonna set it off to the side and then grab another medium bowl and into that add six egg yolks. Behind that, I'll add in 150 grams of sugar, eight grams of salt, and then 30 grams of cognac. Marsala wine would be a little bit more Italian. Cognac is more French, but any sweet barrel aged liquor would work fine. Now for a useful but optional step, in a separate container, I'm gonna combine 20 to 30 milliliters of water or like three tablespoons and then one packet of powder powdered gelatin. Adding gelatin into the mix here is gonna help keep the whipped cream custard stable, and it's gonna set the cream just a little bit more so that we can get a perfect clean slice. This is an optional bit of complexity and the recipe works totally fine without it. Now I'm gonna let this gelatin bloom in the water for five minutes while I get started on this egg custard. Once my water is at a gentle simmer like this, I'm gonna pop on my egg sugar booze mixture and start to whisk it to combine. To get this egg custard cooked perfectly is gonna take about five to 10 minutes depending on your heat level. And unfortunately, you do need to stir the entire time. Scrambling happens here super fast. After about one minute or so, this egg sugar is warmed a little bit. So at this point, I'll drop in my bloomed gelatin puck and then get back to whisking so that I can get that melted in. Again, if the gelatin scares you, skip it. But think of it as an insurance policy to guarantee superior texture and a proper set. Once it's melted, I'm gonna keep on keeping on here for another few minutes by stirring constantly. And you're about halfway there when your custard is loose, but the color of yellow mustard like this. I'll keep on stirring. It's getting a little bit thicker now. And at about six to seven minutes, I'm gonna test for doneness with the thermometer. At this point, the custard is in the ballpark of 170 to 175 F and has thickened up quite a bit. 
so I'll take it off the heat. And here's a closer look at the texture that we're looking for. As you can see, it has a medium thick viscosity to it that is pretty much the same texture as house paint. Next, I'm gonna add in my cooked egg mixture into the mascarpone and make sure to get every bit of it in there because these eggs are the main thing doing the work of setting the tiramisu and we need all of them. From there, a quick whisk to get the eggs and mascarpone fully combined. And I'll mention that I avoid doing this with a stand mixer because it's pretty hard on the mascarpone and it could break. Broken mascarpone means you have to start over. Once I've got the eggs and mascarpone whisked up until there's no more lumps in the mix like this, I'll grab my whipped cream bowl from the fridge and add that into the mixture in two stages. Once the first half is in, I'll come back and gently fold the whipped cream into the cheese custard. Obviously, we don't want to deflate the cream because it's bringing the signature lightness to the tiramisu, and folding it with care is the best way to keep it aloft. Now, the other half goes in, a gentle fold to combine, and the final texture here is like silky, luscious clouds. And once it's set, it's going to be the perfect glue to hold our lady fingers. Speaking of that, Let's build this thing. First, I'll grab a nine by 13 cake pan and then two 200 gram bags of Italian lady fingers. In my testing, there wasn't much difference from brand to brand. Just make sure you're using something dry and crunchy on the outside. I've opted not to make my own here because it seemed like adding complexity for the sake of it. Store-bought lady fingers are an ingredient like anything else and they do the job they're asked to do quite well. Now to build this, I'm gonna grab a finger and then dip it into my chocolate coffee for two fast Mississippis. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Mississippi. Then I'll drain it off really well and lay it into the pan. Resist the temptation to soak these for longer for more coffee flavor, by the way, because you'll get a very unpleasantly wet final dessert. From there, I'll two Mississippi, 23 more lady fingers, making it two dozen in total, laid neatly eight by three from edge to edge in this cake pan. Do, 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 do. And once I've got the base layer of lady fingers laid tidy and tight in the pan like this, I'm going to layer in half of my whipped mascarpone. Wow, look at this. It is so visually beautiful and luscious looking. Now I'll spread that evenly from edge to edge and no need for perfection here. In the end, tiramisu is a pretty rustic dessert and perfect flat layers aren't really desirable. Once I've got this first layer of cream spread evenly, I'm gonna lay down another bag of lady fingers. That's 24 more, two Mississippis laid tight like this. And from there, I'll add on the rest of the cream and spread that from edge to edge one more time. From there, I'm gonna grab a fine mesh strainer or a sifter of some kind and load it up with about 75 to 100 grams of nice cocoa powder and shake a very generous amount onto the top Top layer to cover this entire tiramisu. Now to finish this, I'm gonna move it over to the fridge to set up for at least eight hours, but preferably a full 24. In that time, the eggs and the gelatin are gonna set, but also the lady fingers are gonna soften into a cake-like texture, which is really important for a perfect tiramisu. While that sets, let me quickly show you guys a delightful seasonal variation that I'm calling pumpkin spice latte tiramisu. To make that, again, we start with the espresso. So I'm gonna pull another eight medium length shots of the very intense number 12 Onyx espresso, while I thank the creator of this machine and the coffee, Lore, for sponsoring this video. I've been using the Lore Barista system all week to brew the espresso for this tiramisu recipe and make myself delicious cups of coffee. But before we get to the delicious taste and quality of this espresso and coffee maker, let me show you the tech specs of this thing. The Lord Barista system uses a very quick 25 second heat up process for the water. It has a large capacity 40 ounce removable water tank. And this is a high pressure coffee and espresso system using 19 bars of pressure. If you're not sure what that means, high pressure machines are what coffee shops use to make high quality espresso. Roughly speaking, higher pressure equals equates to a richer flavor, a shot with a more silky body, and this nice crema that you see on top of the espresso and the coffee. The crema is actually a result of bean oils emulsifying during the high pressure of the brewing process. That creates little micro bubbles and adds a nice little bit of silkiness and body to your sips. Now let's bring in Lauren to try some lore. What is Lauren? Think of lore. Mm. Lauren likes lore. Is it appropriate to drink like this? For me, probably the most impressive feature of this lore barista system is its automatic capsule recognition technology. It's able to brew both coffee and espresso and can quickly switch back and forth between the two depending on which capsule you're using. It can brew three different sizes of coffee when you load in the single serve coffee pods, which are also exclusive to the lore barista system, by the way. And it can also make three different sizes of espresso when you load in espresso pods, either these lore branded pods or any other brand of aluminum espresso pod. And if you're worried about recycling, these things are fully recyclable and you can even order a free recycling kit from lorecoffee.com that includes a prepaid mailer. You can pick up the Lore Barista system and Lore Coffee and Espresso capsules on Amazon or at the link in my description below. 
back to the pumpkin spice tiramisu. Once I've got 650 grams or about two and a half cups of strong espresso, into that I'll combine 15 grams of vanilla extract, then one whole BB bottle of espresso liqueur, or about 50 grams. Any brand of espresso liqueur will do, just make sure that it tastes like coffee and it's very sweet like too sweet. Then in goes 40 grams of cocoa powder and I'll stir that to combine. Next, the whipped cream. Just like before, but this time I'm gonna use 225 grams instead of 475. I'll whip this up until I've got stiff peaks yet again, then into the fridge until I'm ready to mix this into my custard. Next, 450 grams or one pound of mascarpone goes into a bowl. Oop, then 225 grams of canned pumpkin puree. Nothing fancy, just standard issue Thanksgiving stuff. Then for the namesake of this recipe, I'll add in 12 grams of pumpkin spice. Now a quick stir to combine to get that spice, the pumpkin and the mascarpone combined. No need to go crazy here. It's still gonna be a little bit lumpy and that's no big deal. Next, to get the custard prepared, I'll combine six yolks, another whole airplane bottle of espresso liqueur, then 150 grams of sugar and eight grams of salt. I'll move this bowl over to the stove over some simmering water and whisk it until it's warm. Then in goes a puck of bloomed gelatin. I'll stir that in and get it melted and then cook this custard until it's in the ballpark of 170F or looks like yellow paint. Next, I'll combine the cooked egg mixture with the pumpkin cheese and then whisk that to combine until it looks like traditional raw pumpkin pie filling, you know, before you bake it in the oven. Then in goes all of my whipped cream and then a gentle fold to get that combined just like before. And there we go, a light, fluffy, deeply flavorful pumpkin spice tiramisu filling that when combined with coffee flavor is gonna be sick. Oh my. Assembling this tiramisu is gonna largely be the same as the first recipe, but with one difference. The lady fingers need to be dunked in the coffee for an even shorter amount of time here. We're talking one Mississippi at most. The pumpkin puree in the custard brings a pretty hefty amount of additional moisture. And when I over soaked the lady fingers in the first few attempts at this recipe, I ended up with a very wet, not good at all tiramisu. So no more than one Mississippi and then into the pan. When the 24 fingers are tucked in neatly like this, the cream goes on top, I'll spread that out. 24 more fingers, more cream, more spreading, and there we go. Now to finish this, I'm gonna dust it with cocoa just like before, but this time to the 100 grams of cocoa, I'm gonna add in five grams of cinnamon and 20 grams of powdered espresso to double down on the autumnal pumpkin spice flavor. Once this thing's all dusted up, it'll go into the fridge for eight to 24 hours. The next day, it's time to tiramisu. Let's start with the first version, or what I'm calling Bry's all-time classic, best perfect tiramisu. I'll carefully cut it with a wet knife here to make sure that I'm getting the cleanest possible slices, and then I'll dig in with a spatula, and look at that cross-section. Clean, cakey, and set to perfection. The creamy mascarpone itself has an ethereal silkiness to it, and that little bit of gelatin helps bring just a touch of extra firmness while also keeping it whipped, smooth, and creamy. The fingers are deeply flavored with chocolatey espresso and have taken on a softer but not wet texture that's kind of like moist, rich cake. There's a little bit of subtle booziness from the cognac, and that eight grams of salt really helps bring some sparkle that most recipes just don't have. All in all, a very respectable pan of tiramisu that I think is quite special and should be made by you for your friends and family very soon. Hey Bri, how about that pump spice latte variation? As you can see, also very well set and full of autumnal cheer. Texturally, this is exactly what you would expect. It has the creaminess of a set pumpkin pie, but also has the mouth coating, silky, delicate softness of a mascarpone cream. It's got creamy cheese, strong coffee, and chocolate all in the same place at the same time. It's good, you get it. Let's eat this thing. Thanks again to Lore Coffee for sponsoring this video. 